Well, here are our two new recruits back from their first walk. They must have been doing all right to be promoted so quickly. Here they go. Johnson is somewhat off balance, it seems. Not quite forward enough. And Parker's knees are too stiff. That'll have to be corrected. Down he goes. Falling is no disgrace in itself, as the best skiers are forced to touch ground once in a while. If a fall is inevitable, take it easy and relax. To get back on your feet, line up both skis across the slope and beneath you. With the help of the pole nearest to the slope, you push yourself up again. Climbing is also done with different steps according to the degree of the slope. The most common step for climbing is to traverse the slope with the normal sliding step, pointing both skis up the slope at a moderate angle. The herringbone is another step used to negotiate narrow passages or short direct ascents. Lift each ski alternately over the other one with the ski tips far apart and the ends close together. The forward position of the knees gives a firm grip with both the inside edges and provides a solid stance. The spread of the tips will vary with the steepness of the slope. In the regular side step, the upper ski is lifted clear off the snow and placed a step above, and the lower ski follows. The knees are slightly tilted in towards the slope, thus gripping the snow with the edges, which will prevent any slipping. The whole pattern resembles a staircase, and the skier ascending it sideways instead of facing it. This step can be used with advantage for short climbs, or reversed, going down difficult and narrow passages. Combining the regular walking step with the side step will make you master of the most serviceable and generally used manner of climbing. The characteristic of the snow plow is the V-shaped position formed by both skis. The ends of the skis are pressed apart with the heels so that the ski tips almost touch each other. Although the width of the snow plow is of a certain importance in decreasing your speed, it can be highly exaggerated without any actual benefit. More important than anything is pressing the knees forward. They control the bite of the edges. The body must be centered squarely and symmetrically on both skis, thus distributing the weight equally. Too much edging is just as bad as holding both skis absolutely flat. You must have the feeling of firmness in your ankles, as though you were gently scraping the snow off the surface. Increased pressure with the heels and widening of the snow plow to come eventually to a desired stop should be applied gently and with caution by pressing the knees further forward and lowering the center of gravity. By pushing one shoulder forward and putting more weight on one ski than the other, you will perform the simplest and most fundamental form of a turn, the snow plow turn. If you want to turn to the left, you pivot with the body over to the right ski. In other words, you gradually transfer most of your weight to what will become the outside ski of the turn. With the transfer of the weight onto the outside ski, the shoulders, hips, and arms have to pivot and cooperate by steering the turn around to completion. 
In particular, the knee, which carries more weight, has to give readily because only if your knees are pressed well forward can you control the edges and assure a smooth and round turn. It is essential to turn with and on both skis, not allowing the inside ski to lag behind. You should come around, holding the snowplow position throughout, with the ski tips as close together as possible. The final position of one turn is automatically the starting position for the following snowplow turn. In a traverse, the skis are lined up at more or less of an angle across the slope, all depending at which speed the skier intends to traverse the slope. The upper ski is slightly advanced, with the greater portion of the weight resting on the lower ski, and with a tendency to lean away from the hill with the upper part of the body. The knees are pressed forward and very slightly in towards the slope. This will lead the skis across the slope without any side slipping. If you want to side slip intentionally, it will be necessary to lean somewhat into the slope with the upper part of the body, balancing your weight on both skis. This will flatten the skis automatically and they will slide down the hill broadside. Side slipping cannot be practiced enough, especially for the soldier skier. It is also the magic key for all the turns at higher speed. While side slipping, keep your skis in line, guiding them with the knees, regulating the distribution of the weight and the bite of the edges. When running in changing snow conditions, and also when going through dips and over bumps, it is necessary to push one ski ahead to protect the skier from falling forward. This advanced ski will lengthen the base for the skier considerably and lessen the impact of bumps. It is a pronounced lunge with all the necessary give in the knees.